Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains bizarre. And today we're going to discuss yet another proposed theory about the extinction of the dinosaurs. Now, we've already talked about how some people think aliens did it, and that's by far the most outlandish one, but there is another one that I really want to talk about because it's not quite as insane as that, but it is really funny in its own way. Let's talk about the theory that the dinosaurs were driven to extinction by butterflies. Lepidoptera is an order of insects that includes butterflies and moths. They're an extremely prevalent type of creature, and I'm sure most of you have seen one or the other, probably multiple times during your life. While some are adverse to insects in general, butterflies in particular tend to be more attractive to people due to their variety of different colors and shapes on their wings. They're very bright and ornate insects, and moths on their own have their own distinctive beauty about them. But at no point has anyone genuinely considered the notion that perhaps these creatures once went mad with power and destroyed the non-avian dinosaurs. <laughs> well, actually, sorry, one person did do that exact thing. The year was 1962, and the gentleman was named Stanley Flanders, who was genuinely a scientist, but he was not a paleontologist. He was an entomologist someone who studies insects as a specialty. That year, he wrote a paper which he dubbed Did the Caterpillar Exterminate the Giant Reptile? Also, I'll warn you, he calls dinosaurs reptiles pretty often during the paper, but in his defense, in the 1960s, it wasn't exactly common knowledge that dinosaurs are more closely related to birds than reptiles. Back then, the notion that they were simply giant lizards was fairly commonplace, so we'll give him a pass on that issue. What we won't give him a pass on is the theory that caterpillars killed the dinosaurs. Flanders thought that the inherent weakness of the reptile was an extraordinary need for an abundance of plant material. See, dinosaurs are, after all, all huge. All of them. Every single one. There were definitely no small dinosaurs ever, except the ones that were. But the large herbivorous dinosaurs would have had to eat a tremendous amount of food every day to stay alive. And that part is probably correct. They would have had to consume a tremendous amount of plant matter each day of their lives in order to keep on going. The carnivores obviously didn't have to do this, but they would eat the herbivores, so if the herbivores died out, the carnivores would likely starve. Flanders' theory hinged on the notion that the first representatives of Lepidoptera would have showed up at a time when they did not actually have any real predators, since birds apparently didn't exist. This is something he literally says, which is hysterical, given we're talking about dinosaurs, but retrospect is 2020 and all that. Without anything to consume the babies of the new Lepidoptera species, the caterpillars, they would go on to consume just so much plant matter with no one to stop them. They would continue on unabated, leaving swaths of forests completely barren. He'd actually seen a thing like this happen in Australia, when a new caterpillar that was imported from Argentina in 1925 destroyed within six years about 50 million acres of the prickly pear. There were no species in Australia that actually ate this type of caterpillar, so that's why, as an invasive species, they got so out of control. Now, this sort of thing does happen, but in this context, I feel like he's missing a lot of factors that would make it so that this just wouldn't be possible at all. For one thing, not every single dinosaur was a massive herbivore. Those are some of the most famous, of course, but they were not all like that. In fact, a tremendous amount of dinosaurs were insanely tiny, a lot of which probably would have feasted on insects as their regular diet and would have been perfectly willing and capable of consuming these new caterpillars. Even if they didn't do it at first, they would have eventually learned that they could eat them, and this caterpillar outbreak would not have lasted nearly long enough to cause the extinction of an entire planet's worth of creatures. No way. I mean, think about that. An entire planet of dead dinosaurs. Over them, 
a beautiful masquerade of nothing but butterflies. That's the kind of picture Dr. Flanders was painting. But it never attracted any real scientific support to the theory because it's just ludicrous. There's nothing in the fossil record that indicates this amount of butterflies ever existed. And Lepidoptera had existed long before the dinosaurs went extinct, millions of years. They had coexisted alongside them for a long time. The notion that an outbreak just magically happened and they had no predators at all doesn't even really make any sense, especially when you consider the notion that many dinosaurs would have been willing to eat insects and therefore control their populations. Hordes of caterpillars out eating the dinosaurs may be a humorous idea, but it absolutely did not happen that way. The big catalyst for that extinction was absolutely the asteroid that struck the planet 66 million years ago, which did wipe out all the non-avian dinosaurs, but Admittedly, in one little victory, it didn't white out the Lepidoptera. We still have butterflies and moths, they totally lived through that. As did avian dinosaurs, which we now call birds. But perhaps that's the reason why modern day birds sometimes target caterpillars for food. It's their revenge for the deaths of their forefathers. That or Dr. Flanders was out of his element. Because he studied insects not dinosaurs. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.